Hey everyone, Zach here from Lafix. Got another video for you guys today. Today I got this A2337. Um, it's a MacBook Air. It's in here for a data recovery. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's the difference between really data recovery and doing like a logic board repair, right? So um, for typical repairs, right, when you get, get it to turn on or if you have a typical laptop, well, I don't even know if it's really typical nowadays, but when you get a laptop, um, you have, right, you have a printed circuit board, you make sure everything works, right? So it powers on, you got your power rails and stuff. But in special cases, especially if you've seen a lot of our recent videos, uh, we show this, this mode, it's like a DFU mode, it helps revive the Mac. The logic board also contains a security chip on there, and that security chip has firm, another set of like firmware, and pretty much like another, it's another type of data line, right? And if that gets impacted, sometimes, um, even if you do like a full on repair, sometimes you need to reload that firmware. And that firmware, um, if you reload a certain way, you can actually go ahead and check out the video I made about the DFU mode. It's definitely a good one. You should definitely go ahead and check out that out. It uh, goes into a little bit more, uh, at least for the steps for doing repairs on it. Um, there are two possibilities where you can either revive the device. You could try to maybe, I would assume it's probably doing like an update or something for the firmware, probably more like how an iPad or like an iOS device tries to update first. And then the last case you have to do would be a full restore on it. And a full restore, it does uh, pretty much, uh, it wipes the whole data, does a lot of stuff. We have great examples on like a 16 inch where we actually have to do a repair. And then we were lucky enough to maybe do like a revive mode for it. But there are worst case scenarios where stuff gets too impacted, especially on the newer ones. And uh, you may have to do a repair and not only repair, all the voltages look good. Everything has been repaired. We did this crazy long fix on the board, right? We replaced this, this, and that, and then the power rail is showing voltage, and then it's just not powering on, or it's showing um, a certain amount of voltage that usually points to more of the firmware going bad. So those are usually just differences here. So that's what we may like to do, is we may like to focus on the data, especially if there's like a liquid spill or something, if there's multiple damages, like if the LCD gets impacted or other parts get impacted, some people just really want to get the data. So we usually have um, different options for people, right? So we want to see what's going on with it because that's the most important thing, right? So let's actually get right into it. Um, I do have this at least open. These boards are a little bit more, in a way, a little bit more simplified as in just the way they look, not really on how they work. Um, so we have this open here. You see it's a really nice board. It doesn't really look to be like there's any obvious liquid spill, but we do notice that maybe we see up here, there's a little sticker here that usually indicates that the screen has probably been replaced. So back of our heads, we know that something has been worked on before. Now it's most likely not going to be the reason why, right? Something failed, um, but it's possible. We don't know because it customer could just say it doesn't work, right? So we need to see what's going on. So let's plug it in. Let's see what our voltages are. I have this one loading here. I should probably just, oh yeah, I have one right over here, right next to me. We always have one right next to me just for you guys. Just to show you guys what I have. Oh, it's the MagSafe. Plug it in. Let's check out our voltages and see what we're getting. Show that. Okay, so plug it in. What are we getting here? It's getting five volts. See that about 0.01 amps. Now this doesn't matter if you do check both ports. Um, that can make a difference um, in the diagnostic phase if it's different. But it looks to be about the same. So about 5.1 amps and about point. I'm sorry, 5.1. 1, 5 volts and 0.01 amps. We like to see that on the USB-C tester that it shows 20 volts, right? And then um, the amps could be a little bit lower on the M1s because they have a power saver feature until you press the power button, you don't really see amperage go up, right? And that's usually probably to contain more of the battery or say battery life, I'm not sure, it's just the way they work. These are ARM chips, a little bit different, they're not typical Intel and stuff there. And we did have the battery disconnected. Okay, so we could take it up. All right, so this is what we got up here. Um, see if there's any obvious damage. It's be a pretty clean board for the most part. If I'm not mistaken, I think there used to be a cover for this, right? I don't think, see that outline there? Usually that's a cover or something, I'm not sure. But it looks to be pretty clean for the most part. We don't see anything obvious here. But we do see that there's a little bit of a strip here. That's kind of what I mentioned out a little bit earlier. If you look here, it's a little bit sticky. See that close to where the speaker connection is? And I did take this up, because when we take this up, voila, we do see there's an issue here with the ports. It looks to be corroded here. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion each side there. Let's go into the microscope. So we take a look. We see that these areas are a bit corroded here each side.
And for these, because this is a little bit of an easier one to do, we could just do a replacement too. Or it doesn't look to be too bad because the liquid doesn't look to be too severe on there. Let's see if we could just actually clean these up a little bit. Okay, so we did a quick fix for it. Let's just check it out and see if it's still gonna work. We're still stuck. We got five volts, about 0.01 amps there. Looks like we're still stuck. Um, we did take a look at the board too. The board actually looks to be pretty clean. You still see that there is a problem with this, um, even though there was a clear liquid spill that did impact this area. Now we're mainly focused on getting the data. And uh, as we talked a little bit about before, um, whenever there's any type of like liquid spill or anything else, especially with data, whenever you're doing a board level repair, you really want to focus on mainly getting the data off because that's the most important thing. But when there's liquid spill, it can also impact um, a chip there that could reset the firmware, um, use a security chip on there. And there's something with, that we can do to help do that and we gotta hope it's gonna actually work is there's something called DFU mode. So we're gonna go ahead and load this up um, we're going to see because the board, we did take a look under the microscope, the board actually looks to be pretty clean. There doesn't seem to be any extra damage there. We took a look under the heatsink too to make sure it's fine. It looks to be pretty good because this is obviously where you have the main area here. But if you ever have any type of liquid damage that does impact, this is giving you about those 5 volts. Um, we've seen on older MacBooks and older ones, we made videos about that. If you want to go ahead and check that out, those videos do show pretty much a very similar thing. And then sometimes when we load... Uh, reload the firmware that's going to go help and it's going to go ahead and make it work so let's go ahead um, let's go bring out our other mac and see if we can actually revive this device and see if we can get the data and what we're going to do is we need to reload this firmware and the way we can do that is we can plug our our source here because our source wants the intel but this is the m1 macbook so we're going to plug it in the correct ports there's a master ports here which are a little bit different for every model. You need to pretty much go ahead and look up to make sure you're aware of which one it's going to be for each model. So let's go ahead. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to reload the software here. I'm going to put in this mode because you're going to see this one uh, should hopefully pop up there. We need to plug back in the screen there and hopefully it should come. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up our Apple configurator. So go ahead and hold the button combination here. Okay. And we were able to revive it. Looks to be pretty good because that's always the worst case, especially if there is to restore the data or anything else. Because if you do a restoration, it's going to throw a fit. But uh, we have a whole video dedicated on that. You should definitely go ahead and check that out. It's DFU mode on how to do it. And um, yeah, so it looks to be pretty good. We're going to go ahead and load this up. And then we need to extract the data right away because the data is the most important thing. And we're very, very lucky that um, the former actually didn't get reset here. Because if that was a problem, then you would have a bigger problem <laughs> than anything else. So uh, let's see if it loads to an OS. Okay, and we were able to actually get it to come up. You can see that we can see the lock icon here. Uh, we were able to do a revive for it. So anyways, I hope you guys are watching this video on doing more of a repair and data recovery for the M1 MacBook. If you did like this video, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. But you're dealing with software tied to hardware, so always gives a problem. But we're able to do it. We'll always keep fighting, leading the way, and doing what we're supposed to do, right? So hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.